Right, so let's start this again. Okay, so we are doing part, uh, we're doing a Tehillim Chav Zion, Psalms 27, um, take two or step two. Okay, here's the plan. So we have one, we have next week, okay, before Rosh Hashanah. The week after is the fast day, right, on Wednesday. So I... So I don't know. I don't know when the fast ends. That was <laughs> I thought you were so No, no, it is just a fast day. So Gedalia or so Gedalia? Oh, I thought. I know oh, you thought I was thinking of Kippur. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so I don't know. Like, I guess we'll take a vote if people want to have uh, share that night. Like afterwards. I don't know what time the fast ends though. That's the that's the issue. Probably. Probably around now. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, here's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Is uh, I, I don't know if I can land the plane this time. Okay. In terms of that's our code word for, uh, for finishing and getting a complete understanding of everything. Okay. Um, but we're going to try. And then uh, if it doesn't work, then I don't know if it's going to extend to next week or, or the week after. Uh, I do want to do what you said, which is to Hill in 51, which is about Chuba. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Are you taking a request for problems? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can talk. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's start off by reviewing what we did last time. And I think the best way to do this is I'm going to just so we can get our minds into the Hebrew again. Uh, I'm going to read Hebrew, English, Hebrew, English, Hebrew, Hebrew, English, and then I, as you've noticed, I've made some judgment calls here. Um, and if if I don't remember when I made these judgment calls, vis a vis like like I, I you know I, I've been thinking about it throughout the week, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you need explanation for something that you notice that's weird, let me know. Okay. Okay. So this is just review of the, of the fact. Okay. So of David, my, Hashem is my light and my salvation. Who will I fear? Hashem is the stronghold or strength of my life. Who, uh, who will I be afraid of? That should say. Two. When evildoers approach me to eat my flesh, my tormentors and those who are enemies to me, they stumble and fall. And we jokingly said that that refers to zombies, yeah. right? Because they're trying to eat his flesh and they're stumbling and falling. But I also said last time that you think it's a joke, but it's really, no, I mean, it's not literal, but, but it's going to be less of a joke than you think, okay? It'll be like... Yeah, okay. All right, fine. Three, yeah. If a camp is marshaled against me, my heart will not fear. If war will rise against me, in this I trust. Uh, key pasuk now. Uh, one thing I have asked from Hashem, it I, has, I have requested, meaning only it, this is the only thing I've requested, that I shall sit in the house of Hashem all the days of my life to gaze upon the pleasantness of Hashem and to seek after his sanctuary. Five. For he will hide me in his shelter on the day of evil. He conceals me in the recess of his tent. On a rock, he raises me up. Six. And now he will raise up my head around, uh, uh, over my surrounding zombie enemies, and I will sacrifice amid joyous cries. I will sing and make music to Hashem. Seven. Shema uh, Adonai Koli. Oh, sorry. This is the, this is the one that's weird um, to parse. Shema Adoshem Koli Ekra V'Chaneni V'Aneni. So here. Hashem, my voice, when I call, be gracious unto me and answer me. Okay, here's where I'm taking a stance. Okay, we had a lot of ambiguous uh, pronoun action going on here. Lacha amar libi, bakshu fanai, es panacha adoshem avakesh. I'm not going to justify my crossing out of, uh, of, of words right now. I will do, wait till the Meiri for that, but this is the translation we're going with now. To you, capital Y, my heart said, seek out my face, lowercase m. Okay, so this is David saying, to you, Hashem, my heart said, seek out my lowercase m face. Your face, Hashem, capital Y, I seek. Okay. Doesn't make sense right now. That's what we have to explain. Okay. Okay, fine. All right. Nine. Um, Al taster panacha mimeni, al tat be'af avdecha, ezrasi hayisa, al titesheni ve'al tazvini eloke yishi. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn away in wrath your servant. You were my help. Do not forsake me and do not abandon me, God of my salvation. Uh, 10. For my father and mother have forsaken me and Hashem will gather me in. 11. Teach uh, me, Hashem, your path and guide me on the level path for the sake uh, or on account of my adversaries. Uh, and then altar said who gleefully watched. 
watch 12, I'll teach the name of Benefesh Sarai, Ki Kamuvi Ide Sheker, Vitea Hamas. Um, don't give me over uh, to the will of my tormentors. Uh, for false witnesses rise up against me who breathe, it's supposed to say breathe violence. 13, I'm going to change that here, who breathe violence. Yes, no, it says breath. Um, who breathe oh. violence. 13, uh, if not for the fact that I believed to see the goodness of Hashem in the land of, of life, dot, dot, dot. So that's an unfinished sentence purposely to imply like badness. And then last one, hope to Hashem, strengthen and embolden your heart and hope to Hashem. Oof. Oof. Quite a, Quite yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's just quickly review our questions, which we didn't exhaustively answer all the questions. I didn't print this on the thing. No, we didn't. And I, and then, cause I stopped myself. I said, we're not gonna get bogged down in the details, but we'll ask the questions that we had. Uh, did you listen to part one or not? I forgot if you were here. I was there for like the last half of it. Last half, okay. Uh, oh, that's right, you burst in and I said, Oren. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, all right, what is the one thing he's asking for? Right, is it really one thing? It sounds like, uh, how does it fit into the rest of the chapter? What about the other requests? Like in nine, 10, 11, 12, sounds like he's asking for a lot of things. Okay, two, who are these evildoers who are approaching him to consume his flesh? Right, and the evildoers also who he's waging war with, the evildoers who are breathing falsehood, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the ones we need to be protected from, et cetera. Okay, three, this is another major question. This feels um, schizophrenic or anxious or desperate. He switches between confidence in God's salvation and then fear of abandonment. And we said, I'll just remind us of this here. We said that if you're going to divide this into half, it would really be like this. This part is all confident and sure that God is going to protect him. This part is like anxious that God is going to abandon him and asking like to not be angry at him. Right. Yeah. So that's the, what we call the pivot point. That's what we need to try to like explain why that account for that change. Uh, four, what kind of assistance is he asking for? Is it just instruction, like in four and 11, right? I just, uh, I want to sit in the house of Hashem all the days of my life to gaze upon the pleasantness of Hashem, which is some sort of knowledge. Or and in 11, teach me your path. Or is he asking for uh, protection from his enemies, like in five through six and 12, right? Uh, hide me in his shelter on the day of evil, conceal me in the recesses of his heart, lift me up on a rock, raise my head over the surrounding zombies, um, uh, don't give my soul over to my tormentors. That sounds like asking for practical, some sort of like divine intervention. Um, uh, five. On three, what is he trusting in? Oh yeah, when he says, in this I trust, right? If a camp is marshaled against me, my heart will not fear. If a war will rise against me, in this I trust, what's the this? Okay. Um, nine. I'm going to actually delete this, not because it's a bad question, but because it's an artificial question uh, from David. Uh, is this a tefillah or a tchina? Um, I think we'll just understand that when we go. Okay. Sorry, David, uh, who's not here. Uh, nine, uh, why would God turn him away in wrath? That sounds the most extreme in terms of like, he's all, God takes care of me, trust me and stuff. And then he's saying, don't turn me away in wrath. If you have to ask for not being turned away in wrath, then you're probably not in a position to like say that God's going to save you and like help you. You know, no. those are you know coming from opposite places. Also, there, there, there's a difference between just turning away and then also being wrathful when you do that. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, turning away. Yeah, turning away is one thing. Wrath is like an extreme. Yeah. Uh, on number nine, he says, "You were my help. Um, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn away your face from wrath. You were my help." Yeah. So when is that referring to? Yeah. That's the question. Um, uh, Eight on eleven. What is it for the sake of uh, of my adversaries mean, or account of my adversaries? What does that even mean? Uh, and ten, sorry, nine. Oh, nine is the, is the uh, side question. Why is the custom to say this during this period of the year? I don't. I don't even tackle that yet. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, what do you got? Can I add one yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. Uh, it's, it's very poor. Like, I would have thought that you would ask. Positive four? Yeah, or, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Positive four. This is one thing I've asked, and then there's three things. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we asked that. Yeah. yeah. Why is it not listed? There? It is listed. Uh, uh, Should I not read? Uh, That's crazy. It, it is, is the first question. What is the one Can you pass this really uh, down to Akiva? <laughs> Uh, yeah, is it one thing? How does this fit in? What about all the other requests in the, in the chapter? Like, nine, well, 10, that's, 10, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the zombies got your brain, all right? Um, okay, so, uh, so what we're trying to do right now, our goal for tonight is to define the idea of the chapter as a whole and then to hopefully say what of it, like what's the purpose of it. And then, um, if we can get these other two questions of like, is this actually true? Uh, 
Uh, uh, and then uh, what is each detail saying? That would be great. And I want to just like set up this question here for, is it true? So the, the problem, I, I think I said this last time, the problem with this is it sounds like he's saying, just trust in God and God is going to take every, uh, care of everything, right? That does not happen, right. right? So there are two answers you can say. You could say, well, someone on King David's level, that does happen. But it's not even true on his level, right? He had a, a very, very like traumatic life of people like uh, like going after him and stuff. And so, so like, how do we, what are we supposed to do with this? And, and, and this is very tied to the fourth question of what are we supposed to get out of it? Throwing his words on the floor is not going to help. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, um, what are we supposed to get out of this? Like, presumably, you know, we said that 14 seems to be like talking to the audience of hope to Hashem, strengthen and embolden your heart and hope to Hashem. Practically speaking, how do we translate this into a hope that we can actually think is realistic? Okay, so those are the, that's those are the questions on the table. Again, let's focus on the big picture and only focus on the the individual points. If like you think it's going to answer the big picture, yeah, kind, you're on. So I want to say I want to the, the, the first step. Yeah. I said the theme of the whole thing yeah. is just because God has helped in the past doesn't mean you have like insurance for the future. Okay. Um, and that's like a big, big point because like he. he Okay, that's good. That he has had help. Yeah. Um, you know, at the same time, there's like that, like uh, that, that tension with the, um, with like the, I won't be afraid. Yeah. So I think, I think it's, I think it's both. Don't think that you have automatic insurance because you've had help, but also, like, on top of that, as almost like a next step, is like constantly realize that, and like that's why you have this like, okay, and this like going back and forth, and almost like like a, yeah, like that gravitating towards both sides of like God is with me or like God's about to leave me. Okay. okay. So I, I'm going to try to be again in all uh, in Michelin. I'm going to try to be vigilant here and take notes as we go, just so we can like point. So uh, Chaim's approach uh, is um, just because B, because God helped you in the past doesn't guarantee that is not a spell guarantee. That is not a spell guarantee. guarantee. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm making mistakes. Doesn't guarantee that he'll help you in the future, right? Uh, uh, hence the tension between the certainty of the first half, right? Because it happened, uh, and the ten the uh, anxiety and uncertainty in the second half, uh, because he doesn't know whether it'll happen. Right, and then I guess just to kind of like add on like a point of like uh, to make that a little bit less um, esoteric in yeah. a sense. Like it's really more of like, he doesn't know whether or not like he's worthy in a sense. Okay, right. That, uh, yeah. Right, so, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and part of this, uh, okay, uh, uh, this- uh, It's really like a self-reflection on himself and saying, am I doing the right thing? It's like a constant correction of like, uh, or like correction of your, Yes. Okay, good. That's a nice theory. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Theory. I, I, I was not thinking in that direction. Okay. Yeah, Isaiah. So I'm not sure if my theory is exactly the same as what Kyan is saying. You're slapped off. Yeah. I was thinking like the same thing, very similar at least. But I think the main idea is kind of um, pointed out in the last topic. Yeah. Because hope to Hashem, strengthen and embolden your heart and hope to Hashem. It's like David, <laughs> and you see it in like four, like one thing that I asked him. From Hashem, he requested the sin of etc. Yeah. Like David approached life starting off with a certain framework. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's not really like this, but like it's like he started off in this framework of like Hashem is in charge and he trusts in Hashem. Then he went through life and like faced all these challenges. Um, and you know, there's like evil and like people are like coming at him and like you know, things are happening, and now he has to like sort of, it seems like in the pair, there's like this challenge of like melding the two, of like trusting in Hashem and like having, you know, that framework, but also at the same time, like there's like real life, like things happening and like the pair is about like how to meld them, or at least it's like, it's like talking about melding them. Like, okay, not really have it figured out, but like. Okay, do you, you want to comment on that to say what? Really they want to comment on it. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a really a valid thing, but like, <clears throat> We weren't 100 percent sure when his life he wrote this, but it's clear that at least like there was bad things happening to him. Which is why I don't think it's like a legitimate critique. Okay. Like um, can I ask you just to I I I I think I got the individual parts, but can you just state the unity one more time? Well, so or I the unity of your approach, not necessarily the unity of the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know if it's like chronological, but four seems to be like the beginning. Like he he started off with this framework that yeah. he trusts in Hashem. Yeah. 
but then there are like real life challenges that are like also occurring to him like sort of like after <clears throat> he trusted in him yeah and like now he is like now it's like a new type of trust mission because it's challenged okay okay all right the that's okay yeah, okay you know, okay experience okay so <clears throat> he started off with a genuine and certain right uh trust in hashem which went unchallenged until the second half uh and now it needs now it, it's less uh i don't want to say certain in terms of like his mental certain like his intellectual certainty but less um uh i don't want to say secure either clear to him i would say like you know like he He's now like. I mean, let's let's yeah. put it. Let, it's now it's more tenuous. Let's just leave it vague, right? Yeah. More tenuous, okay. Uh, and he has to strengthen, strengthen it, right? Okay, yeah. Fine. I want to bolster that by okay. saying that if you look at seven through, I guess, uh, twelve, thirteen ish, like when he's talking about like all those different things, yeah, they're mm -hmm. all different. Like there's all these right. different requests, just like these right. different, like yeah, uh, these like different um. Uh, 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 ways of, I guess, uh, approaching like, yeah. what he wants or what he needs. Yeah. I'm uh, looking, failing to find the word, uh, vantage points. Like, yeah. It's like from all these different, like, uh, my parents uh, left me. Right, and, right. Uh, don't hide from me. Yeah. Teach me, like, all these different, like, uh, I guess, adjectives to yeah. like, explain what he wants. Yeah. So, like, it, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yago? Uh, nice. Okay. <clears throat> what, what, what is he, what's the one thing he's right. asking for? Yeah. Right, so that is um, the thing mentioned in four. Yeah. He wants to be involved in Kafna Sashem and things that are in order Sashem. Yeah. And then there are other requests here, but four is really the the essential request. Like yeah. That's the one that his whole personality right. is built upon. Yeah. And then all the other ones are supplemental. Okay, good. I think that I think yeah. you have to say that, right? Is yeah. that that the the he really is only asking for one thing, but there are many uh many um applications expressions of that like and and that's the uh, that's the heading but it's all serving that one thing yeah yeah Warren? i don't have a full idea at yeah. all but is there a possibility to say that seven through 14 was written after like considerably after one through we have seen that in certain things about like there's different time periods but it's yeah. very speculative um it definitely is but yeah i mean the one thing you have going for you maybe is i mean i don't even know what this means my father and mother yeah, have yeah, forsaken yeah. me like like that seems to be, you know, I don't really know when his father and mother died. I, you know, flame shots, they, they died. I mean, they didn't oh, leave him. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I, I don't know. That's the only like chronolog chronological hint maybe, but yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speculative. It just, feel, it just feels like the first time would be like when, you know, something good is happening. Yeah. And then a long time passes and then things turn bad and then yeah. the rest. Yeah, that's definitely possible. So th and that could that could be is that that and that kind of fits in with Isaiah's a little mm -hmm. bit that uh when things are going smoothly, then he has all the first yeah. half, and then yeah. when things are challenged, it's in the second half. Yeah. I and I just think like you could say that, but you also don't have to like you can also just say that he his like mental framework, like he uses as like this beautiful, like joyous thing that Hashem you know that he believes in Hashem is like like in general the concept is great but like then the practical like he has to work it out yeah 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 that 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 is what you're saying I guess I'm saying though that that could also play out in chronology right. of like you know things are are going fine and you are very secure in your beliefs until they're challenged and then like the question is like uh, you know uh, what do you actually believe or what do you, what did you just like right. you know intellectually embrace yeah yeah i want to comment on what yaku was saying so i definitely agree like i mean that like, like you said it has to be that four is uh it's like the main idea yeah and then like, but i want to i still want to point out that like you still have to explain that there's kind of three parts of four yeah in like the request and like how that exactly plays out i mean i have like an idea on it but like, okay. Totally okay. So yeah. can I venture my approach here? Okay. Uh, and it is different. I think it's different than, uh, well, I don't know if anyone else has anything to say. I, it's not the same as either of yours. Okay. And I do want to explore yours more, but I kind of want to uh, reveal the, uh, the big thing today. Now, here's the thing is I shared this with Ken and Ken, uh, as Ken always does, uh, you know, uh, um, um, what? Yeah, steam, well, steamrolled it in the same way that you uh, steamroll like a pizza, like it involves applying pressure, but made it into something better, not like, like, like crushed it, but we did not finish because uh, classic excuse, he got a new puppy that had to like be, be uh, you know, so we didn't get to the end, you know, so, so that, that's kind of why I'm not sure that this is going to get finished today. Okay, so 
the one who who uh, who like enlightened me to this is the Miiri, pun intended. Okay, um, <laughs> Miiri is on the right column of the packet. Okay, uh, and we're not going to read every single Miiri, uh, every single of those comments. Amen. But it's what was it? Amen. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, here, okay. Um, uh, okay, so we're not going to read every Miiri, but it's this first one that just unlocked everything. Okay, so uh, oh, it's, uh, I need a volunteer also. Okay, oh, no, that's too know. far away. At some point, I'm gonna flip a coin to you, oh, wow. and if you catch it, it'll make for a really cool moment. And if you drop it, it won't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, just just giving you a heads up here. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We should, you'll be able to hear it, so it's gonna be a very loud coin if it hits the ground. Okay, all right. So la David Hashem So uh, uh, for David, Hashem is my light and my salvation. Nira, it seems. So again, one reason why I love the Miri is because he states the theme of the entire chapter. Uh, he, he states his theory at the outset. Okay, so it's very, very clear. Nir Shazim is more Amru David Der Chlal. says, it seems to be that David said this in a general manner, okay? As opposed to, for example, Sforno on the bottom left, who says, Bezem is more, he's mitne Shaul, that he was saying this when he was fleeing from, from uh, King Saul, right? So. He's saying, Miri's saying this is not about a specific time in his life. This is general, okay? Is this general to him or general to everybody? Uh, we'll see. Okay. Tefila lehe azer al oivav It's a prayer to be assisted uh, against his enemies and making known his trust in God. Okay, those are the two themes. They're clearly related, okay? V'chein, or sorry, let's, sorry, that's not the two themes. I think that's like one thing, okay? The chayin lahoda, so too he's making known, shaloh haisa kavanas of tefillah, la kavanas srara v'nitsua. He's also informing you through his, his prayer that his intention is not for authority and dominance. Okay, he's not striving for authority and for like for rulership and dominance. O kavod v'tanug, or honor and pleasure. Ava la kavana shiyucha lahashlim nafsho u lahasmi v'avodos Hashem Yisala. He's saying his only intent, his only objective is to perfect his soul and to be continually involved in serving God. Yeah, he, says that. he says your theory. Yeah, right. This so, is a, oh, I'm saying like, yeah, that's, that's, that's four. You know? That's four. Yeah, yeah, right. But this is, this is like Yaakov's, uh, oh, this is going to be what Yaakov yeah, uh, yeah. said. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so that's the theme of the thing is trust in God and saying that he doesn't want anything else except for being involved in perfecting his soul and, uh, and, and serving God. Okay. So let's see how this plays out, okay? But then the, the essence, though, is going to be in a little while, okay? So, Amar Hashem This is why he says Hashem is my light and my salvation. So he gives two interpretations. I don't really care at this point which one. Um, uh, I think they're both fine. I don't really want to get caught up in the details. First one is Ori is Mehoshech Atlaos is from the darkness of like the tribulations. Okay, that's light. The Yishi and salvation and my salvation from the strength of my enemies and their dominion. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, then he brings a proof. Okay, then he says, Oh Yeforash, or you can explain Ori Zeha Olam, my light in the from the darkness of this world, the Yishi Haba, and my salvation for the world to come. Okay, again, I don't really care which one we say. Okay. Um, okay, now this is where it gets important. This this next until the end. Okay. Mimi ira, who from whom do uh, do I fear? Okay, who do I fear? Lepirze, according to this interpretation, biuro. Its explanation is like this: Shelo ira limaneze lahatradas haoyev. I'm not afraid. Um, sorry, Shelo ira limaneze lahatradas haoyev. Why am I blanking on how to grammatically translate this? I'm not afraid of being prevented due to the um, burdens or the distractions of the enemy, okay? In other words, that's what he's saying he's not afraid. He's not afraid that the enemy is gonna like distract him from his goal of perfecting himself. The chain, so too, ma'oz chayai, okay? The fortress of my life, le according to this interpretation, pirusho mivtsar nafshi umuza, the fortress of my soul and my, uh, my and its stronghold. Bakar nefesh chayai, the soul is being called my life, that's the thing that goes on into the world to come. All of this is asking for divine assistance in the success of his perfection, his self-perfection. Out of fear due to the many preoccupations that he has. Okay, 
So can anyone uh, articulate why this is making me so happy in terms of unlocking everything? Does anyone catch the, uh, the conceptual uh, current? I'll say it again, just straight in English here, okay? So my, the, the, the stronghold of my life, so he says my life here refers to the soul because that's the thing that truly lives. It has eternal life. And all of this is to ask for divine help in, in, in success in his perfection out of fear of the multitude of things that could distract him. It sounds like a stoic idea. Yes. Uh, yeah, do you wanna elaborate on that? Yeah, like I guess all his enemies are here and like he's in war and there's like a lot of different things which are going wrong and like he could use that in order to like gain a Hashem and grow and whatever. But it's very easy. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually sorry. I interrupted you. Uh, I interrupted you. Where to go? It's under the chair. I knew it was coming. I saw your yeah. hand in your pocket. Sorry, I just wanted oh, to bring you a right. proof. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming he didn't catch it. He did not catch it. <laughs> yeah, I guess Zoom filtered out the noise. Okay. Yeah, no. No, so Ayala, Ayala is, is right. Sorry, I cut you off. So he's, he's saying that, that there are all these things that uh, these, these enemies distract him in, 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 uh, in the field. And, and what is he asking for help with? Using that in order to gain you the Hashem and whatever, as opposed to like getting distracted. Exactly, using that for knowledge of God and instead of getting distracted, right? So this is the uh, this is the Marcus Rios, the obstacle is the way, right? Which I put here in case no one caught the coin. <laughs> um, uh, um, so what it says on the back, uh, so on the front it says the obstacle is the way. On the back it says the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way, right? So uh, the idea there being that. Um, the, the, uh, the childish person basically just wants every distraction or harm to be removed from him, right? That's not how reality works, right? But what David is asking is he's saying, there are these enemies that are coming against me, okay? And I can't necessarily stop them from harming me bodily, Right or even like con you know doing conquest. We're gonna see later on encampment encampment against me, you know. But I don't want it to distract me from my perfection, from my ability to perfect myself through gaining knowledge of God, through working on my 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 character, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so he's but he's asking for God to help him to stay resolute with that, with staying on track and not letting him get distracted in using all of these things for his own perfection. Okay. Now, he's not ruling out asking God to protect him from his enemies, because certainly it's easier to be involved in perfection when you're not having people coming around you to kill you, right? But what he's asking is his main request is that he does not get thrown off from being able to utilize all of his faculties to perfect himself. Where does he see this? Where does the, the Miri see this? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll see when he, as he walks us through the commentary, but the, um, the place where he sees it in the Pasuk is the fortress of my soul, okay? Um, which is, he's saying my soul is not, excuse me, what would you have said in terms of the, the simple meaning, the fortress of my life? Physically, right? Yeah. So Meiri is saying that this refers to the soul, right? I think that's where he's he's seeing the, uh, the oh, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, Yago. So what about the Ori Vishi plan? So the Ori Vishi, okay, so so I, I think this is, that all of this is going to fit into the way he formulates number four, uh, puzzle number four, okay? And it's all going to fit in. Okay, so let's... It sounds like you're saying that Shem does do that physically. Yes, it does, it does sound like that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not ruling that out, okay? Um, but let's go on, and, and this, you're going to see uh, things are going to get clear, but also more... Um, there's going to be problems that arise as a result of this. Okay, so I, I don't again. I don't want to do the whole thing. I want to just just let the Miri uh, uh, talk. Okay, and by the way, I came up with an analogy. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm not going to record this. Okay, so v'chazar al bitchono v'kel lehazar meoyav. So then he goes back to the theme of trusting in God to help uh, uh, from his enemies. Amar, he says, "Bikrov alai mereim." Okay, when uh, the enemies, when the evildoers approach me, um, sorry, when they come uh, close to me to eat my flesh, okay, which by the way, now you can understand what's the shot, what, 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 what were we alluding to with zombies? 
his brain <laughs> okay yeah right the, the threat is to his brain right obviously not his brain his soul right but like but in other words he's 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 worried he's not his primary worry is not that they're going to physically harm him again that is a concern because if you get physically harmed it interferes with your ability to be able to perfect yourself but his primary concern is being able to um uh, to uh, continue working on the perfection of the soul, okay? Which, by the way, as I've been talking about this, I'm realizing that it does fit in very nicely to what Isaiah was saying in the sense of, I think the average, Isaiah's theory was that the first half is expressing his ideals that are in their pure, pristine form. And then in the second half is when these ideals are challenged. And I think we, because we, we like ease and tranquility, we treat that as like a problem, a step down, you know? Um, but that's not necessarily the case, right? That many, in many cases, the, um, the, the trials that you go through actually help you to develop more than you could have in the, you know, in the uh, seclusion of like, uh, just like your, your texts or whatever, you know? So like, it might be a step up. Okay. Um, so then he says like this, Tsare uh, my, uh, my tormentors and my enemies to me, Klomar Kodam Hanitsuach, Ani Odea Shemshli. Okay, this, this part is where it gets difficult already. Okay, before uh, the victory, before I'm victorious, I know that they are mine. My enemies are mine. Va'ani Machzikam Bihiskarvam Eli. I grab onto them when they come close to me, Ki'ilu Heim Tachzidi, as if they're under my hand. Uki'ilu Bahalikasim. And it's as if when they come towards me, they're stumbling and falling without any energy. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, this, just to plug in like, what we know is happening. Like, yeah. yeah. Plug in Isaiah's idea. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. It seems like it's, like, it's like, you know, when you have like an argument in your head with someone and you're like, and you try to like intercept all their moves and then you go and you have the argument with them and you like completely lose. Oh, so you're saying this is a bad thing. Well, that's not a bad thing. This is like I'm saying. This, this is him having like a conversation in his head. Like this is how he sees like like armchair philosophical like ideas. Okay, right. And then once he like later in the paragraph, like gets out there, into, yeah, like, the battlefield. Then he's like, wait a second, so that's what's to go. And that's when your challenge. Is. Interesting. Okay, I just like the different take. But yeah, Isaiah. Maybe it's on the same spelling out what kind of thing it was more like. <laughs> you know, you guys can say your own things, right? You don't have to say. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like uh, it's like he knows. In himself, that like he he is a person who cannot who can allow his soul like he can grow from this and not lose. Something yeah, in terms of perfection. That's what I was thinking also. Yeah, yeah, right. In other words, like at this point, so I do agree with you that at this point the enemies haven't you know uh, uh, come up to him yet. They're, they're approaching. Okay, um, uh, but he's saying like I'm uh, right now. I'm convinced that like no matter what's going to happen, then I'm going to. Uh, perfect myself right. it's yeah like it's like in a sense it's not even a challenge it's actually right. just like a chance for perfection yeah exactly yeah right. yeah right uh bring it on right. you would say <laughs> okay yeah but it's gonna get weirder okay now this is even closer sorry yeah, yeah. even when they they reach me to overpower me to the point where they set up a camp against me, Shalahem, their camp, to besiege me, I'm not afraid. So they are close now and they've set up a camp. Okay. So too, if, they, if, they, uh, uh, if war rises against me, in this I trust. Wrote to meaning to say, what is he trusting in? in? In my statement that I said, namely, Hashem Ori, Vagomer. Hashem is my light and my salvation. So in other words, he's trusting in this principle that God is going to guide him to perfect himself. Okay. Um, so, but again, now it, sound, it sounds like they actually like overtook him. Okay. Um, uh, or sorry, that they're going to war against him. Okay. But we're going we're gonna to see it a little bit more. Now he pauses and then expands upon like what his, his goal is. In order to make known his objectives in uh, striving for salvation, he says, this is what I'm asking for from Hashem, and this is what I request. Rotalomar meaning to say, Osa this and nothing else. And this is an important point, by the way, because if you're asking for anything else other than an opportunity to protect yourself, so then you can lose. Right? In other words, like let's say like you want to protect yourself, but you also want to win, you know? So then like there is going to be a loss when you um when if you get defeated, you know. 
Like in other words, oh, I see, I see, I see. like in other words, in order, let me, let me state from a different direction. What we said is that he's really asking for Hashem to allow him to be essentially to retain his values that everything he wants to do with his life is just to be involved in perfecting himself, no matter what happens, right? right? And not get thrown off by his enemy, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So you need to be focused on that as your value, you know? It, it, what it reminds me of kind of is like, with well, the Ram, you know, Ram quotes Chazal in Hegel's Talmud Torah when he says, if you want to learn Torah, like, uh, um, and make money, so then you're never going to get the crown of Torah, right? The crown of Torah would be someone who's going to be devoted to learning regardless of his, his uh, situation. Or like I said last year, like I think we did this in Ramam uh, Bikius, is like uh, Ramam criticizes people who learn amid comfort uh, and like, you know, uh, oh, yeah. and, 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 uh, and, and our, our theory was like, you know, the person who says, I will learn when all the conditions are correct, but it's like, I'm, I'm, you know, tired or like, I can't like, you know, like, like the chair's not comfortable. Like I'm not going to learn, you know? So um, that was not a reference to you pulling up the comfy chair just now. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you, you like, and, and it's okay to prefer comfy chairs, but the thing is, is you can't make your, these other preferences contingent. Right. You can't make your involvement in Torah contingent on these things. Right. Like if to really be your value, you have to be like uh, doing it no matter what. Like yes, yeah, even even if you have to sleep on the ground, yeah, like we did in the old Yeshiva building. You think I'm joking? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, it wasn't all of us. It was when we couldn't fit everyone, and someone had to sleep on the ground. That's just how it worked. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what? No, I did not sleep on the ground. Yeah. Okay. So Klomar, so he expands on the Shein Tachlis Kavanasi Lesrara Vakavod. My purpose in this is not for authority or honor. Rock Leo Shifti Bivis Hashem Koi Mechayai, only to sit in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. La Chazos Benom Hashem Ulvaker Behekalo, to gaze upon the pleasantness of Hashem and to visit, to inquire into a sanctuary. So what does that mean? Klomar. To grasp the glory of God as much as possible, which means appreciating the wisdom of God in Torah and in nature, right? Those are the two ways we get the glory of God. And then the third thing is, uh, is to visit, he's learning is to visit his sanctuary, which is where all the wise people hang out. Okay, so he just wants to be involved in like learning and like hanging around wise people. Yeah. So that, just to take a step back to what you were saying before, that yeah. if your whole objective is to perfect yourself, it doesn't matter whether or not you win or lose. So, that's a, that's a, that's so I, I, I don't want to state that extremely, okay? Uh, I, 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 maybe this is what you meant. I just want to qualify yeah. this. It's not that it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Uh, yeah. I mean, in other words, like this. Yeah. Whether you win or lose, you're going to use that as an opportunity to perfect yourself. Okay. Right. But you still want to win because right. if you lose and you're thrown into like a state where like, you know, you're in uh, in jail or like you're wounded or whatever, it is going to be harder to be involved in knowledge of Hashem. But, it, but if, you know, I mean, again, the, the uh, at this point, it's, you know, it's, it's really tragic when something becomes, uh, when something is such a good example that it becomes cliche, you know, but like the, you know, really good example of this is Viktor Frankl in Man's Search for Meaning, right? I mean, you know, and he's not the only one that this happened to, but he is the only one who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning based on it, right? Where he he was, so the, my understanding of the story, I reread it this summer, but the, the, the story, the, the facts are that he was a psychologist and he was working on like this, his, his uh, thesis or whatever. And he likes, you know, he, he, he got uh, taken to Auschwitz and he smuggled it in with him. Uh, and like right at the outset, then like the, the, the guards like just destroyed it, you know, and he was totally like um, devastated and, uh, and was about to give up hope. And then like it dawned on him when he was in the camp. So they said, wait a minute, I'm a psychologist. I'm trying to study human behavior. I am in a laboratory of human behavior right now. And I can further my work based on, I can make the obstacle into the way and make the impediment of the action into uh, <laughs> what stands in the way becomes the way, right? And I can use what's going on around me to, to further what I was doing in the first place. And so, so the thing is like this is, yeah, my, yeah, exactly. Yeah, my, my, it's true that my, my, my physical uh, thesis was uh, destroyed, but like, the essence is my mind and what I'm learning here. And guess what? It ended up, I mean, I don't know if you asked him, I don't know. I think it seems like it ended up being better for him. I mean, let's put it this way. If he had never gone to the camps, he would not have written Man's Search for Meaning, right? And he wouldn't have written it in that way, talking about the experiences of going through this and talking about all of the, you know, he, he writes in the book about the people who did break and the people who did not break and how it depended on whether they had like some other higher value that they were searching for, you know? So like that, that so 
so the thing is, is, is like, so in other words, but, but at the same time, you don't want to ask to be thrown to a concentration camp. You know, that's why we say in our Yom Kippur davening, you know, when we say, uh, you know, uh, uh, that God should not bring about like our forgiveness and atonement through afflictions and sicknesses, because you don't want to be put into that situation because you don't know how it's going to turn out, which is acknowledged here also. You don't know if you're going to be able to maintain that level of uh, commitment to your values. Yeah. So what about wishing that one's L was painful? <laughs> I sense an accusation. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So for he's referring to the uh, the episode. Oh, yeah. So he's referring to the episode of the Stoke Jew podcast. Uh, may we have an elo filled with, suffer with with suffering and a painful new year, uh, which is talking about how real growth occurs through pain. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so what I was saying in that, if I remember, uh, is that, um, all real change, oh, sorry, all real growth is going to involve pain. It has to, because real growth intellectually or emotionally is going to involve, uh, you know, you being attached to a certain, something and then needing to expand your horizons or let go of that and that's going to be a painful process you know um so so what i was saying is we should all wish for a year in which we are growing and feeling that kind of pain the pain i'm talking about now is the uh is the pain of circumstances which could distract you and make you fall apart or could make you you know thrive and like get even better this that is, you don't know yeah this is external pain, this think, is external pain. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. correct yeah i guess it's another cliche um but the tour of this one is uh learning from dover not to ask for a test mm -hmm. you know? um, right yeah yeah so. exactly okay um okay now is where it gets a little bit more problematic this is so far so good yeah. okay the ata and now oh sorry no not yet key it's panini suko how do I translate that? When he will conceal uh, five. Uh, for he will hide me. In for he'll, hide me in shelter. Okay. Rotalum Yasin Alai Bever. So he will shield me with his. Uh, I know art school. Uh, I'll, I'll be really impressed. You know, art opinion. <laughs> yeah. So I also internalized the art school. Uh, I don't know exactly what opinion is. We need David. Uh, it's, it's a wing of some sort, but I don't know what the difference is between opinion and like. I know what an opinion is, but opinion. Uh, we could also ask Google, but David would give a better yeah, explanation. Maybe? I don't know. Opinion is the outer part of a bird's wing, including the flight feathers. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So it's like so the, 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 what? That's what I thought. <laughs> it's like the, uh, the structural, uh, like, um, part of the wing plus the additional shelters of the flight feathers. That's my theory. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's like the most sheltery, you know, of the wing thing. Okay. <laughs> to speak in uh, technical or ornithological terms. Yeah. Beyond Ra'a on the day of evil. So this is where it gets problematic a little bit. On the day of harm. The day of the war of the enemy and his overtaking me. So here's the thing. Okay. So uh, Ken and I were, were debating about this. Does this mean that he was, that this is talking about when he is defeated or when they are threatening to overtake him? Yeah. I would Right. The problem though is he's calling this a bad day, right? Yom Ra'a, and he's got Russo a lie when he overtakes me. Like we use his God bears to like um, to be victorious over, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're the king. The defeat is being killed, isn't it? Not necessarily. I mean, many times, yes, right? Uh, but you could be made into a vassal. You could be thrown in. Uh, in in jail, right? Lose yeah, you can lose face. You can become Emperor uh, Hirohito. Yeah, I mean, you can be, have your divine divinity stripped of you. Not in our kings, obviously, but yeah. I mean, maybe he's referring to the time where, like, he actually did lose like hope in in this, like, uh, that's that kind of overpowering. Perfection. Yeah. Uh -huh. But but like Hashem didn't like allow it to last forever or something. Like okay, that. Uh, sorry, you know, I, I forgot to finish the puzzle. Let, let, I think this will help also. He will conceal me in the concealment of his tent. Bitsuri, Romania, on a rock, he will lift me. Klomar, Yamideni, Betua. He will set me up secure. As if he put me on a on top of a of a high rock. Uh, where no one can uh, can reach him. 
So that's the weird thing I'm saying. On this day when the enemy ta- overtakes me, then God will set me up in a secure place uh, where no one can reach me. So that that's I'm not not exactly so sure. Yeah. It could be in the literal, like the day the enemy actually comes and overtakes yeah. him physically. Yeah. Which he's still set up in uh, five. Oh, someone have an English they can share with us. Yeah, it can also be the stoic thing, right? Where you're just you got right. That point. That's what I would like it to mean, <laughs> exactly. Right? You know, point where although you are beset on a daily on a daily basis yeah. with all kinds of pain, yeah, itself is not a problem. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's what I would like it to say. I'm just not sure. And this is what Ken was pushing back on. Of like, he wasn't sure how far to take this. And by the way, okay, uh, let me let me. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, uh, you, you remember telling me this year when we went through Hallel? No, okay. All right. So this is not my first rodeo with this topic. So this is a big question I have in the entire book of Tillam and also in Judaism and in trusting in God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which is, um, which is, um, Okay, you know, I, what I was going to do is I was actually going to pre- uh, present this through poetry because I thought Ellie was going to be here, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. Um, and um, uh, there, there's the, anyone ever heard of the, I'm not a poetry guy, okay, but I am a movie guy. There's this movie called Invictus. Yeah. Oh, I know the poem, yeah. Which, okay, oh, she did. Okay, so yeah. so so it, it, it's named after the poem. It's about Nelson Mandela um, after he got out of prison where he was thrown into prison for 27 years, I think. I think it was 27. Um, like the tail of, no, I'm just, I mean, yeah, no, um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's our chapter. Um, but, uh, and so I think this was Nelson Mandela's um, uh, uh, poem that he read to give himself strength during that time. So I want to read it. And th- my question is, to what extent would Judaism embrace this idea as an end in and of itself? Or as that's a bad, bad way to say it. To what extent would Judaism agree with this idea? Okay, so this is a very short poem. Okay, and uh, and I I'm not going to do this here, but uh, I recommend that you go to YouTube and uh, type in Morgan Freeman Invictus and hear him reading it because you know. But I can't play it through the speakers. Um, Invictus poem, right? So this is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the conflict here? Master like, oh, yes, yeah. right. Yeah. So, the I am the captain of my soul, definitely, right? That is in last week's parsha of uh, of uh, Re. Oh, no, so, oh, sorry. No, so two weeks two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I have placed before you today life and death, uh, the good and the bad. Choose life, also, right? The only thing. Right. The only thing, uh, everything's in the hands of heaven except for the fear of heaven, which is free will. Definitely Judaism holds you are the only one who has free will. God does not uh, uh, control your decisions. But then I'm the master of my fate (laughs) does not sound like it is in line with Torah, because at the end of the day, like you just said, everything is in the hands of uh, of heaven except for the fear of heaven. But the question is the meeting point, because what really is your fate? Yeah. You have to find fate, right, right. Because certainly your external circumstances are not in your control, right? right? But if fate is, um, uh, okay, to quote, okay, I'll be impressed if anyone gets this movie reference. There is no fate but what we make. Okay. What is it? I do remember the line. Uh, Sarah Connor. Oh. Terminator. Mother of John Connor. Terminator 2. Terminator 2. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, there's no fate but what we make. Um, so, so if you take that um, uh, literally, right? I think I also have a story of uh, If you take that literally, that's just dumb, right? Like, of course, there's stuff that can happen to you that, that like that you know that that you're not making, right? But yeah. Did you say fate is just like the place that you get to, or like or like the the end? Yes. That, that's in your hands. That's in your hands. You can choose whether or not you want to do good or bad. Exactly or right. Bad. So if fate. So if fate does not mean what happens to you externally, but what that makes you become, yeah. 
So then it was again, the choices, the choices you make from that, from the external thing. So then it is entirely in your hands and you are the master of your fate, right? In that sense, yeah. Seems like then there's also another kind of aspect of fate, which sounds almost the opposite, which is actually looking back. If my fate is regret versus, uh, I don't know, happiness, then I made these decisions. You know, that may not like know what's going to happen as a result of them, but yeah. I know that I'll, um, I'll be happy that I've stuck to my values. Right. And that's a fate that I can do something. Correct. Like. Yeah. And that seems to be what David is asking to preserve that I am able to take whatever happens to me and then maintain my uh, my 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 uh, values of of using it to perfect myself and to be involved in in knowledge of God, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay. So I guess we answered that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's go on a little bit more in the meiri. Um, okay. The ata and now we're almost at the halfway point. Okay. When we get to the halfway point, then I want to. Uh, that'd be a good stopping point to stop and take a big picture. Uh, the Atta and now, uh, wait, what did the English, what did my English say? And now he will raise up my head over my surrounding enemies and I will sacrifice amid joyous cries. I will sing and make music to Hashem. So he says, the Atta Yerun, Kamo the Az, and then, okay, it doesn't mean and now, but it means and then. I don't know when the then is, Klomar, the Az, Yarun. In the situation of the bad, bad, yeah. bad day. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, Yarum Roshi Al Oivai, Shame to be My head will be raised uh, over my enemies who are around me. I mean, yeah, it sounds like the enemies are still around him. Yeah, well, right? I, I thought it meant the odds is like, it's like after. Oh, well. Like, to, like, there's, 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 there's like a like, Well, chronology. I mean, he did say. Mm, but. No, like, well, the Oz is connected with. Now, like, this is happening. Like, they, they came against me, and like, now I've come out victorious. Or... Yeah, but the thing, problem is, it never says that he's victorious. It sounds like he's still in it. Just right. Because the talking. way the Meiri is learning it, it's saying that he will, God will shield me. And then when they are on a, a day of, of bed, when they overpower me, God will lift me up and I will be secure in the sense that we were saying. And then when that happens, then uh, he will raise my head above my enemies. I mean, I, you can read it the other way that so that God is going to save him. I just feel like that goes against the whole approach. Well, like, yeah. Kind of like, is he giving the sacrifices? Well, let's see, let's read what he says about the sacrifices. Just like yeah. and I will sacrifice in his tent. That means on his uh, altar. Zivche Trua uh, and uh, sacrifices of uh, of Trua, which he learns not as uh, on the shofar, but Rotzlom of Bahamaya of Simcha, like shouts of joy. I mean, that does sound like victor victory, right? right? So, yeah. I was going to say, is that being done from the, the secluded place that he put him in earlier? Like when the war happened or is yeah. that like after the war? Yeah, not sure. Yeah, that's the that's the ambiguity, yeah. Could there also be like a bit of a third category where it is after the war, but he's still surrounded, but he's like above it in a sense. Meaning like he says like his head is raised above yeah. the, the entire thing. It's like, even though like, Meaning originally it was like him basically alone in a field, and mm -hmm. then there was his enemies around him, and then he's like lifted on a rock. But now he's like almost like he's not on the rock anymore. He's like in the midst right. of the enemies, but, but it's like as if he's is like, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like the main part of it, like it's fine. It's, it's, it's like still like above like that. that whole thing that's yeah, on. yeah. He's got the uh, the force field, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's one more. There's one more uh, uh, Aurelius quote that uh, I wanted to bring up because it's relevant to this. Um, what does not make a man worse than he was, neither makes his life worse than it was, nor hurts him without or within. That the only way someone can harm you is making you into a worse man. And there's only one man who can make you into a worse man, and that's you. <laughs> so you are the only one who can harm yourself. No one else can actually harm you because the you, your body is not you, right? Your, your possessions are not you. Um, but, uh, but the you is your soul, and no one can actually harm your soul except for you. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. I actually want to do one more. Is the next one the face one? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure that we address the face thing because this is another good example. So let's just go back to the face positive to show you which pronouns I'm using here. My pronouns are capital Y and <laughs> lowercase m. Okay. So to you, capital Y. Wait, do we skip seven? Oh, we skipped seven? Oh, all right. Fine. All right, so we'll, oh, he skipped seven. Oh, my. Oh, me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> lowercase me all right um yeah here i have my voice when i call be gracious unto me and answer me okay so this is the transition to like calling for help okay sent so, to you hashem with capital y my heart said seek out my lowercase m face 
your face Hashem I seek. What does that mean? Okay, so here's how the Miri says it, okay? He says, nearly, it seems to me, Klomar, it's saying, Kisha'anim avakish kavod usraram esa'am. So this is, remember, King David talking. When I seek honor and authority uh, from the people, Achani omer lahem, to the point where I tell them, shivakshu fanai, vakruni tami, to the point where I tell them, come and like seek my countenance, that's how our school would say it. Uh, and, uh, and, and like, um, you know, like pay respects to me constantly. So like, you see David, like telling people to like, respect me, respect me, right? He says, many I'm not doing this for my own dominance and seeking of honor, okay? Of Alibi, but my heart, which means my, my ultimate objectives and, uh, and, and plans, what I really want, that's what we said in Mishlei, that heart means sometimes uh, this morning. We were saying, Kadesh Tehe Emasi Alehem is so that my fear should be upon them. Ad Shavim Levakesh Das Panecha, to the point where I get them to seek you. Ulakaim Divrei Torasacha, and to fulfill the words of your Torah. Umilas Lacha, and the word for you, or to, uh, to you, Kamo Ba'avurah, means for your sake. Klomer, meaning to say, Kesha Amarti Lehem Shivakshu Fanai, when I tell them to seek my face, it is only for your glory, is my intent. Consequently, when I tell them to seek me, like to honor me, that's me seeking your honor. And that's why he says, your face Hashem, I seek. And then he just adds this little like... Um, the other commentators had a very difficult time with this. <laughs> okay, you know, so, so just, let me just read it into the puzzle and then we, we can analyze it. So he's saying like this. Um, so this is, again, another example of when he says, there's only one thing I'm asking of you. So he's saying, when I, you know, I'm the king and I'm asking for obedience and for honor and all this other stuff, but it's not for my sake. It's not because I want honor. I know that if they honor me and I direct them towards you, you know, towards your Torah and knowledge and perfecting themselves, then that will be instrumental in getting them to do it. So I, me asking for honor is really me seeking out your honor by using my, my monarchical position to like get the people in line with your, with, with, with your objectives. And yeah. How, how exactly is he, is he doing that going here? Is it like they honor him and then they see him honoring God and they're like, whoa, like we honor him and he's honoring God. I don't know if he's, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's not saying, he's but not saying, yeah. Not sketchy, but it's like, uh, it's a little like, I don't know. Well, that, I, I, I don't think he needs to say that. That's the whole institution of Jewish monarchy. Notice how I'm conveniently avoiding explaining that. But I'm saying that, that he's, he's presupposing that you know what the purpose of a Jewish king is. And that is the purpose of a Jewish king. <laughs> yeah um and again I, I i i guess i haven't done that this year uh because elizabeth died last week thursday right i haven't recommended the crown uh the, the, the yeah the netflix series the crown so watch the if you watch the first two episodes of the first season and either you'll be hooked or you won't but in the one of the benefits of that series is uh, we don't really have experience with monarchy, right? But you you do get a taste, and that's not even like absolute monarchy. That's like British monarchy, you know. But you get a taste of like what what role the position or the honor of a of of of, of a monarch was plays. You know, it's it's it's, it's I, I found it really beneficial for you know for my own understanding. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question, but then um, that feels like an extreme example it would be like this guy who you know. Yeah. You just happen to, you know, quote a, a King Chizkiyahu, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, you know, he took it to a, to a pretty good extreme, which worked for him. Yeah. Which was like, you're going to honor me so much and obeying me that I'm going to put a, you know, sword outside the base of my dish and you're going to learn. Right, you got, yeah, so that actually is a good example. He, the largest learning campaign in history, yeah. right, is he got everyone to be involved in learning. Right. Yeah. And I and I think no matter how scared you are of the king, I think it doesn't just come from that when you're because something about learning requires like a certain intrinsic right, internalization of what you're doing, mm -hmm. not just route going through, okay, fine, we're doing the thing you want. Right. And if it changes the people, then it there has to be a level of honor for the king in that they valued it in, right. like, at the end. Yeah. yeah. I don't like something the the the, the lie of that is that like at least I don't know the total that we did last year in Kyushu, I think like 
says that the Chazal is that like every, like even like the children like knew like uh, yeah that's what I was thinking right? they knew like the uh, most yeah. complex areas of Torah yeah, yeah. um I know I, I, I said before we're just going to do one more and then I said we're going to do one more after that but I want to do I, I, since the next one is also a face a face pasuk I want to talk about that also because then right after that he says do not hide your face from me uh, do not turn away uh, in uh, away in wrath your servant. You were my help. Do not forsake me and do not abandon me, God of my salvation, right? So why is he saying, don't hide your face? And what's the wrath? So uh, he pulls a fast one, but it's a good fast one. Don't hide your face from me. Since I'm striving so much in seeking your face, God's face, then don't hide your face from me. And do not turn away your servant in wrath. What does that mean? Because God concealing his face and distancing himself, that is wrath and anger. Okay. And up until now, you were my help. I'll teach you in the Don't leave me now. So just in terms of answering our question, how, why does he think God's going to be angry at him? So it's not anger. It's distance, and he's equating distance with anger. Sure. And in line with the whole theme that we've been saying, what would what is he practically asking for here when he says to God, "Don't distance your face from me"? Assistance. What was that? Assistance. In, for what? Like his perfection. Yeah, is he saying, "Don't allow me to lose my values in the midst of all these like enemies surrounding me and yeah. like crawling me"? And also, I forgot to play this through. Also, don't let me get caught up in my own honor. And start doing things because I want to be a great king and like get the people to obey me. Like that's why that's in there because he's there. There's threats from enemies and there's threats from there's there's um yeah yeah there, there's to be lifted right yeah like there's domestic enemies also right which is his own love of glory right and don't let that distract me right um, so many people keep their values and then they get put into a position of power and then that corrupts them you know and then they they, they lose track of that so he's asking for for support and help in that. Yeah. Where where on the second does it talk about that? Uh, the um, uh, getting distracted by his uh, love of honor. Yeah. Uh, that was in the previous pasuk when he's explaining to God, uh, when I get the people to honor me, I'm only doing it so that they honor you, uh, not for my own. Uh, I'm not doing this for my own authority and my own seeking of honor. So you're saying like it's kind of implied that he's saying. This is the way it is now, but help me not change this. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that that's why he's using that example. Yeah, and yeah, you're right. I mean, Eerie doesn't say that explicitly, um, but uh, yeah. And I, I, I mean, the place where the Eerie does reference it is when he's saying there's only one thing I ask from you, that and nothing else. And he's saying I don't want any of this other stuff, and I'm tying it into the theme of the Eerie, which is I don't want to get distracted from my uh, my goals. Is that your question, Tamar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you, you say that in, in a kind of clever way there's almost two requests in that one being meaning i'm asking for this and when i say i'm not asking for those other things i'm saying don't let me get because i was saying get distracted with those other things yeah but also keep me from asking for those other things yeah that, that could be part of it as well yeah yeah um uh, it's secondary it's like a one b request. yeah yeah right <laughs> that's going funny uh so uh, i know we said we're gonna do one more no we're not gonna do one more positive i just want to comment though just to set us up for for, for next week I think this is the tension, okay? And again, it happens to be similar to Isaiah, although it's in a different way, is um, like, what is, the, where, okay, where's the anxiety coming from in the second half, according to the whole approach we're taking? I know we said this before, I just wanna like tie together. Uh, what's the reach of perfection from the Shem not helping me? Him losing sight of the way to do that. Yeah, him losing sight of, 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 of that perfection. And and it's true, he's, he's asking for Hashem. But remember, at the end of the day, it's in his free will, whether he uses, whether these things distract him or whether he uses it to further his purposes. And the most God can do is help the external circumstances that lend themselves to him doing this. But God can't actually make him do this in the right, uh, make the right decisions or like, like God can't make him, choose to not get caught up in his own glory or choose to not get bogged down in his enemies like like uh, uh you know uh oppressing him it's like that's the tension you know and I, I like this because it makes it see when we looked at it we were like oh 
In the first half, he totally trusts God and God takes care of him. And here he doesn't know whether God's going to take care of him. But this is a different thing. This is saying he doesn't know himself. He doesn't know himself. He's saying like God uh, is my the, my light, my salvation, and I trust in him. And this is the thing I want. But I'm in doubt about myself, whether I'm going to be able to keep that in my sights uh, or whether uh, or whether I'm going to get distracted and then lose my connection to God through that. You know, I think it makes it much more when we first see it, it's much more like I'm just begging God. Either you can save me or you can't save me. This puts the whole onus on, on you, which is why I think and I've said this many times. I really think that when you understand the Jewish idea of prayer and trust in God, it's a terrifying idea because you realize it's all about you, you know, and like, you know, the, it's, it's all about the decisions that you make. And if you make those decisions, you know, correctly, then we do maintain that God helps you. But it has to go in that order. In other words, you have to actually be having the the correct values and decisions and do everything in your power. And uh, and then you're asking God on the basis of that to like like help you. You know, yeah. That was a good, really good like sports quote, uh, like saying, which like the harder you work, the luckier you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. You know, why why is David like we're asking Hashem not to like remove and like like not to be Hester Panim from him? Because like if David is doing the right thing and is worthy, like and is you know reaching his perfection, then like he shouldn't be worried that Hashem will hide himself from him because you know like like either he's not doing what he already said he's going to be doing, yeah. and Hashem will remove himself from him, or he will succeed, and then why should he ever worry that Hashem like Hashem only like meets the needs of the person who is like yeah. you know Hashem doesn't like not do what he would what is just yeah so like. Why does David have to okay, so that? I'm going to quote to you advice from me, <laughs> but the reason why I'm quoting it is because I don't remember giving it, okay? <laughs> so someone, someone quoted me to myself, okay? And so, so this, is some, this is a friend of mine when I was in Yeshiva, so we're talking like like a long time ago, and, uh, and this must have been like 2008 or nine. And he was about to go into his career and it was a long career road, you know, and he said to me, he asked me for advice and he said, like, I'm really worried, like, when, when I'm in all this, like, intense schooling and then I have my own, like, like, you know, when I'm, I'm involved in my work and stuff, I'm going to be really distracted and, like, I'm really worried about, like, maintain, you know, staying, you know, connected to learning and, like, continuing to, like, work myself and just not get caught up in the rat race. Uh, like, what do I, what do I do? You know, so I said, I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing is that as long as when you're involved in this part of your life, as long as you are still worried about keeping up with your learning and all this other stuff, that is a good sign that those are still your values. But if you stop worrying about how are you gonna fit your learning into your day and all this other stuff, then you're gone. And the scary thing is that you don't notice when you stop worrying about that stuff. Like, which is why you need to form really good friendships and connections and relationships to people who keep you in learning. It's all about like your, your friends and your peers, you know? So that's kind of the light in which I'm understanding this here, which is he's asking Hashem, don't distance yourself from, from me, you know, which is asking for God's assistance, but it's also him reminding himself, I don't want to allow myself to be the type of person who is distanced from you and loses sight of my values. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, and and you look. Know, one solution is just you know you could do like me, just never leave you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's aim to land the plane next time. Okay. And so the goal for next time is I want to finish reading and uh, the Meiri on these last sukim, and then try to unify the whole thing. And then again, we got to make it practical. Okay, we got to make it practical in terms of what should we have in mind when we say this. And here we have a, a big, um, a big uh, clue and like benefit. He is ta- talking to you at the end, saying, "Hope to Hashem, be strong and be courageous. Hope to Hashem." And the weird thing is, I don't know what this concept of hope to Hashem is. Trust in Hashem, we've talked about a lot. Hope to Hashem is a little bit of a weird thing, especially in light of Monday Night Mishlishi. Like, I, I don't know what hope means anymore. Um, but uh and then if we can we'll try to answer what does this have to oh maybe let's theorize now why are we seeing that during this time of year why are we saying this during this time of year what can we answer now maybe mm-hmm. uh so yeah we're seeing this from through rosh hashanah yom kippur sukkot and shmini 
right? So, so these I'm four. Huh? Yeah, from Rose Coach Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, I mean, this data, this entire like, season is like about uh, doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> it started strong <laughs> and then it poorly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let, let, let's let's think about it. Let's let, let's think about it, okay? Because let me let me give you let me convert your uh, your um your very good answer into a uh, into a, a hint, um, which is I think you have to define what is the this period that we're in, right? Um, and the 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 um the nickname for this whole period is the Moade Chodesh Hashavi, the 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 um the festivals of the uh, seventh month. In fact, in my, um, I got to do this one just a second here. Uh, what year did I talk about this one? Spiral curriculum. Oh, that was your Sunday share a while ago. Yeah, yeah, but which, which Sunday share? Uh, that one, oh wait, the year given. Uh, uh, no, no, it was, no, it was a recent it was, oh, one. Oh, it was a Moadim and uh, the calendar. Oh, it was the Omer, yeah, yeah. right. Yes, uh, the Omer, yeah. yeah, thanks. Oh, okay. The Omer yeah. one. Yeah. That was a really good one. Thank you. Uh, Omer. Yeah. Where was it? Hold on. Was it good? Top tier. That was top. The thirteen meters. That was top tier, and that, and that one barely anyone came to because it was air view of Kipper. Yeah. That was that was a uh, year before you came. You want to get that again? Oh, I would do it again. <laughs> yeah, I would do it again. Um. Oh yeah. So so th this is just. Uh. I, I think we need to do this just to put. Uh. Put us in the proper frame of mind. When did you actually show these powerpoints? I never seen in Sunday share, in the in the Omer Sunday share. Yeah. Oh, sorry, am I sharing the screen? No, I'm not. Hold on, give me a second. Share screen. I know Ayala. Ayala can draw this if I ask her to. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's two types of curricula. Okay, there's <laughs> the uh, yeah curricula. Yeah, the linear oh, curriculum. That. That's great. Um, that, well, that's how you say it. I know, I just okay. never heard So it. a linear curriculum would be like um, math, right? So you learn your numbers, then you do basic arithmetic, then algebra, then geometry, then free calculus, then calculus, okay? So it's linear because after you complete one step, you go into the next and you don't go back, okay? Unless there are problems. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Okay, uh, but then there's something called the spiral curriculum, okay? Which is you start off... Oh, yeah, you start... Oh, like I, this is a story of my life. <laughs> you start off um, here with the red, right? Then go to the orange, yellow, green, green, other, And then you get back to the red. But what happens is that you, you this advances you to the next level and you improve, improve, improve. And then when you get back to the red, you're a different person, right? So the holidays are Pesach, Shavuos, Tisha B'Av, uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, Sukkot, uh, Shemini Yetzirah, Hanukkah, and Purim. Okay, right? So the idea is Pesach is the first holiday. You go and immerse yourself in the themes of freedom and slavery and uh, and redemption and all that stuff. Then you develop with those ideas up through Shavuos, which is what this Sunday share was about last mm -hmm. year, right? So I'm not going to re-spoil that. Then uh, in the summer, this is kind of derbanan, so you you know, so ignore Tishba for now. Then you have this mini series within the series. Okay, so Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Shemini Teres is the Moade Chodesh HaShavii, the, the holidays of the seventh month, that's like the, the, uh, the rapid fire tur turbo turbocharged like developmental progression. Okay, and then that kicks you into the, the winter uh, and the spring until Pesach again, or with the, the rabbinic holidays, Hanukkah and Purim. So, so the goal is to, to define what is this period during which we say this, and then that might give it insight into why, into the Minog. What's okay. going on with the year one, year two, all that stuff? Uh, because each year you're going through a different thing and like, you know, you're, you're, by the time you get to year two, you're on a, at the same holiday, but at a higher level than you were in year one. Uh -huh. And you go through it again and you're at a higher level and a higher level. It's like when you learn first day in year six. Yeah. You're like doing med school. Yeah, exactly. Or music, as you can see that I stole this from a music school site and just erased all the musical terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's stop here and we will continue uh, next week, finish it next week. Yeah.